Today, I will show you how I animated this traditional animation motion design using Calipeg on an iPad. It was made for the Monday challenge with the theme podcast, so that's why there is a limited color palette here, and it helped a lot to have a specific theme to get new ideas and try new stuff. I started with a basic animation, which is my animatic here, with only a few drawings, showing the idea of my shot. The idea was to have a woman recording a podcast and then someone listening to it on a phone. Then I made some design decisions, basically here with the microphone. I took a reference to understand better how it will look. I also took a reference for the phone here and the way the fingers will hold it. Here I have the basic design of my character. Then I did a turn for my character. I have the body here, then the head, the guide for the turn of the microphone and the microphone itself. When doing so, I simplify everything with basic shapes to make it easier to animate and understand the volume. Then I made a more advanced animation. I made the head following the body, so the body turns and then the head will follow to make it more dynamic and interesting to look at. Then I added the arm movement because she will just make some kind of magic and move the microphone. I added the hands here. And if you watch carefully here, you can see an ease out. Then we change the pose, ease in, we make a turn, Easy in again, so with a few drawings, you can have a dynamic hand movement. And then I added, of course, the microphone. The microphone was fun to animate. Here it will start moving after the hand has finished the movement. It will push the microphone. And then when we start the turn, it will speed up with a slowout here. And then the speed increases. And when it turns, I made a rotation so we can feel the speed of the microphone. Again, there is not that much animation here, only a few drawings. And those ones here are just the same drawing copy-pasted. To copy-paste a drawing in Calipeg, long touch with two fingers. And then you have cut, copy and paste icons. Okay, so now I have the first part of my animation. And then we have the end of the loop with a few drawings here. Some are just copy-paste and then inverted from the first movement here. We also have the microphone being dragged by the rotation. So there's a bit of a delay. And also when it slows down, it moves a bit left and right. And in the last frame, she already lifts her hand to make it loop properly. These layers here are put in a transformation layer just to make a bit of a scale. It starts a bit smaller and then it becomes bigger and it will help to make the animation dynamic. And then we have the phone part. So I have seven layers for the phone. The phone is basically three drawings. Here it is a squash then a stretch, and then we have the original volume of the phone. Then I add the borders of the screen, interface. Here, the finger will press play. I have some more interface here, the cover in the podcast application. I transformed it with a simple transformation like this in perspective mode. And I just change it like this to adapt to the interface. I added some bubbles around to make some effects. Really simple here again, just a few shapes getting smaller and also around the play icon when the character will tap on it. It's kind of a water effect. Really simple here again, just four drawings. And then of course the hand, which will appear here, then press and slow in. That's the basic animation of the phone. But then I added a transformation layer, which contains all the seven layers. And I added some keyframes here to go up and then it goes outside the shot. And that's why it was important to have a zoom in here for the character so you can see a nice transition here. And at any time you can go into the curves here, select keyframes, change the dynamic of the tangent to make some variation of the slow in, slow out speed. So here is my animation and now I have to clean it and then color it. So I have one folder for each part of my animation. The first part, the phone part and the end part. So I have the same structure than my rough animation, of course. For the first part here, I have 20 different layers for the lines and colors of my animation. Same goes for what's after. So the end part of my loop. And it's the same for the phone. For the colors, I want to talk about the decisions I made. So here I will add the background. This is my basic color palette, black, white, and green, with one or two variations to make some shadows and light. So here, character in white, background in green, headphones in green, microphones in green, and then I made a fade. That's just choosing a color here and then going to the white like this. Two colors here to make the transitions from green to white. And now it's inverted. The hand is in green, the background is in white, 
So you can see here a nice contrast with the same colors. And then we go back to the green background with the same transition, just inverted. To invert, select and invert. And as a final touch for this motion design animation, I decided to add some dot patterns which I will loop in the background. I will do it again just to show you. So I add a new drawing layer. I double tap to create a new sheet. Then while it's selected, I tap on import. I choose one of the dots pattern I found online. For example, that one here, open. And then I will just add it like this. I validate. Then I will split to have my drawing sheets in fours. I can also just double tap, split in fours, like this. And I want to make a loop, for example, in five different sheets. So one, two, three, four, five here. So I will select the rest and delete. And now I will just go to a frame, transform, change the size, the angle here, make sure it goes correctly. So it will make some changes in the pattern. Then I select all, tap, tap and drag. I make it a cycle and I extend. So now I have kind of a vibration of dots in the background and I can either change the opacity here so I can see the colors behind like this or I could also use the blending modes and choose any blending modes I like. Maybe a classic multiply here. It can be even more subtle, even 5% here. It will still add some life in your animation. You can also add some grain, some paper texture. With that kind of technique, just import a few images, change their size, their rotation, and then just make it a cycle, adjust blending modes and opacity. And that's how I created this motion design animation using Calipeg on an iPad. If you don't use Calipeg already, you can try it for free for 7 days on your iPad App Store, and then choose between a one-time purchase or a subscription. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn everything about how to use Calipeg, there is a complete guide here. See you soon in the next video and have fun animating with Calipeg.